Hey everyone, in this video we are doing another bouncing ball question, but this time we're going to draw a picture instead of using the formula. Let's say we have a ball and it's dropped off a cliff. The height is 100 centimeters and it'll hit the ground. So we'll call that one, the first bounce. And after a bounce, let's say it goes to 50% its original height. So it was dropped from 100 meters. Its height up here will be 100 times 50%. Well, 50%, you want to change that to a decimal. So it would be 50 divided by 100, which would equal to 0 0.5. So when you do that, you should get 50 centimeters is the height after one bounce. So our ball bounces again. So after two bounces, it's got a height up here, which is now its previous height, 50 centimeters, times 50% 50 of that height, times 0 0.05. 50 times 0 0.5 would be 25 centimeters. And then our ball will bounce the third time. Up here, it's got 50% of its previous height of 25. So that would be 25 centimeters times 0 0.5, which would be 12.5 centimeters. So theoretically, this ball is never going to not bounce any height, which is kind of cool. It'll uh, definitely like approach zero, and uh, any reasonable person would accept that, yeah, eventually it's going to have a height that's so close to zero you can call it zero and say the ball has stopped bouncing. So the method of drawing a picture is good to a certain extent. If you had a ball that was dropped off a 200 meter high cliff and it bounced a thousand times and you want to find the height on the 999th bounce, you don't want to draw a picture like this and draw a thousand bounces. I have a video on how to use the formula, so if you have a question where you have many, many bounces, I would say don't draw a picture, just use the formula. But I think that the picture is good because it shows you how the path of the ball is, you know, bouncing along. And you could verify all these numbers by putting them into the formula if you want to prove to yourself that the formula works. 